Good morning, YouTube land. Well, you know, I know everybody is a total human being and, well, I know we all, like, see things and, you know, become afraid because there is the fear of the unknown. And what I want to convey today is that the Bible is totally your strength. It, I mean, it is. I have Bible verses right here. I'm going to I'm going to read them to you. I just want to let you know that when you hear people say that Christians use the Bible as a crutch, you know, or that Chris, you know, you, you hear things that aren't true. You know, and you hear things from unbelievers that say, well, I'm glad that works for you. But that would never work for me. And the problem with that kind of thinking is Number one, it's stinking thinking. And number two, it's that strong delusion spoken of in Acts. Where people are under a strong delusion and they reject the Word of God. They reject the Bible. They argue over the Dead Sea Scrolls that were found in the 1940s. And they argue over the Book of Enoch, which was found around 1773. And so there's all this misconception and this misunderstanding and this shunning the word of God and that's your pro that's people's problems shunning the word of God don't they know what day were don't they know what time it is we are definitely living in the last days we are definitely at that time frame right before Jesus Christ comes and shows himself mighty and magnified in the clouds. And I've got Bible verses on that. But today I just wanted to let everybody know in, in my daily video that the Bible is your strength. If you're feeling weak, I'm, you know, the Bible is your medicine. The Bible is the best medicine. If you open up your Bible to Daniel chapter 10 verse 19, it's going to say, And he said, O man greatly beloved, Fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yeah, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. And if you would have saw me 25 years ago, I was this hellion living in the world with a bad attitude. I was mean. I was full of, you know, I, I was a mean person because I, my, my Marine Corps dad and his post-traumatic stress disorder and when you're a kid and you can't talk back to your parents because you're, you know, you're taught to, to just shut your mouth. And then when you're told to just shut up for so long and you're brought up in fear and your self-esteem is just beaten and, and just 
beat to a bloody pulp by an iron fist of a stepfather. It, you know, it can really damage a person. It can. But I sit here before you today to let you know that I am okay because God Almighty was watching over me all the days of my youth. All the days of my youth, the Lord was with me. And when you feel weak, like you can't do another day, you gotta dig inside yourself. I don't know if I have time, but I've been recently coming across the millions of Americans that are on prescription drugs. I've been like, and it's not like I was interested in this category. It just, it just came to me to see that there's millions of Americans that are on some kind of prescription drug. And then when you read the prescription drug, um, what's that thing called? It's the negative part, the side effects. So then you read the side effects of these drugs that are being prescribed to people and then you realize that you know nine times out of ten these prescribed drugs for many a mil many millions of Americans number one it causes them to be like dependent you know, um, there was this joke when I was in the infirmary, you know, many years ago, if you know my story, um, I was in the infirmary because I was doing drugs. So I had this problem discerning reality with non-reality. And so when they put me in the infirmary and the doctors and the nurses were like trying to diagnose me and figure out what was wrong with me and what drugs did I use and I just told them I was doing speed and then for some weird reason when I got out I came across the chemicals that are put into that drug and I just could not believe for about six months I was I was doing pool chemicals. I mean how stupid I know it's it's like what is wrong with society? What was wrong with me? Who were those people that God allowed to cross my path? <laughs> To make, the, you know, it just, I'm just, I'm telling you, I didn't know the Bible was our source of strength. I had no idea. Isn't it amazing that when you get older, like there's a verse that says, train a child in the way they should go, and they may depart from it for a while. But when they grow up and mature and get older, they will come back to the, the Word of God. That's, that's the guidebook for living, is the Bible. In Psalm 119, verse 28, it says, My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your Word. When you ask the Lord to strengthen you, He is going to strengthen you. You gotta believe it. I bet that you can talk to 50 people that have gone through a divorce and I've never in my life 
I've never been through a divorce. I hear it's a horrible process and just a, the most horrible experience to ever go through in life is a divorce. I, I mean, if you think about it, those are two souls that were brought together and on a special day exchanged wedding vows and then for some unknown reason well I mean I don't want to say unknown because I mean if with my imagination I could sit here and come up with at least 50 things why people would just walk away from the love that that they didn't want to live without. And did you know the statistics, the statistics on marriage? They fail. Not all of them, but a majority of them end in the big D. I know, I know, I know. It's But you talk to, I bet you anything, you talk to people that have gone through a divorce and and chances are it it was a it it was this learning experience you know and it's something that it it makes you a different person i you know i just i don't want to go through it but i hear it makes you a different person in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. I know! Read it! Meditate on it. I dare you to be a slab of meat and just marinate in this sauce. God's word. I'm not the meat meritating in the sauce type person. But I can definitely be a carrot dipped in ranch dressing. So if you're a vegetarian, okay... You need your your food. This is your soul food. The Bible is your soul food. And if and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you would want to Psalm 46 verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I don't know about you, but I've been in trouble. And the first thing that comes to my mind and the first things that come out of my mouth are, Oh Lord, you've got to help me. I mean, when I'm in trouble, that's the first thing I call out. He's the first one I call, I cry out to, I call out to. God, I messed up again. I don't call my mom. I'm calling Father God Almighty. I need him to rescue me. Every now and again, I screw up. I know. You would think that being a Christian all these days and all these years, that, that I would get it right, but I still stumble and I still mess up. And what do I do? I cry. I call myself names. Gosh, Donna, you're such an idiot. How could you be so stupid? Seriously, Donna, again? You did that again? What's wrong with me? I do that to myself quite often. 
and I hear the Lord just calm me down. He calms me down. I know it's the measuring cup. The dishes didn't get washed again. Can you imagine? Somebody puts the dishes in the dishwasher and the dishwasher's full of dirty dishes and then they put the sparkly dishwashing detergent in there and they don't hit the start button. Raise your hand if that was you. So this morning when I open up the dishes, they're dirty and I'm like, why? Donna, you loaded the dishwasher, you put the soap in it and, and you still forget to push the start button? Yes. Okay, I did. It's going now. You know, how many of you out there got these automatic things and we automatically forget to hit the automatic start button? I know! Don't feel bad. I do it all the time. That's why when I make my videos first thing in the morning, it helps me focus my mind, my heart, and my soul on the Lord. Because this world is going to pull us away from the one that really loves us. You gotta know we're living in the last days. You gotta know that. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I mean, please, if you're gonna do the faith walk, just take it easy. Take it easy. When you gotta run, you're gonna be able to run and you won't be weary. I don't know what we're gonna have to run from or run to, but I'm telling you, if you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, it's not too late to get to know Him. It's not. It's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. Because without Jesus, you're not going to be able to see beyond this temporary, physical existence. Yes. This body is temporary. This life on earth is temporary. Don't you want to tap into what's out there? That's right here inside of you, like right now? You can have joy and peace and the truth and everlasting life and you can be strong in the Lord if you would just read God's love letter to you. It's his love letter to us. And now I gotta go. I know. And if I ever, if you ever see me not make a video, I just want to put this out there before I click off. It's because of my network. I've got it today, but if I don't have it tomorrow and you don't hear from me in a week or two, the times that you're not hearing from me is the times that I'm either on the phone, working with Comcast or cable company, restoring service, or whatever else. Sometimes my internet gets knocked out for no reason. I'll wake up and I have no connection. And I love you. God loves you more. Get firm in the faith. And I'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Have a blessed day. Bye.